Welcome to Remote Sum Class, Mr. Dowd here. Happy Friday. Hope everyone's having a fantastic day. I know I am. I'm excited for this upcoming weekend just because it's the weekend and everyone loves the weekend. Even the band, the weekend. They're okay. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to continue working on our uh, well, my St. Patrick's Day project. So I just kind of finished working on the actual pot itself for the pot of gold. Could have done maybe a better job on the legs. I don't like how that came out. Hmm. Yeah, let me tweak those legs a little bit. That just doesn't look as good as I'd want it to. I don't know why it doesn't like it going a bit more. All right, that looks a little bit better. Maybe this one could be turned a little bit or spun a tiny bit more. All right, that looks okay. This one could maybe spin out that. Sure, that looks good. So next I'm gonna work on the gold coins. So that should be really easy, right? I'm just gonna do a cylinder, make it really tiny. So a one by one, maybe even smaller than a one by one. One by one by one. Actually, uh, yeah, it's going to be even smaller than that. Let's go like Let's keep it at would be a like a half. Would be a 0 0.5. Maybe a little bit too thick. So let's go at a 0 0.33, so a third. That looks okay. Let's change that to yellow and let's bring that up. And bring it over. Alright, so now I'm gonna make a ton of these. Control C, Control V. Oop, that didn't even go high enough. <laughs> That's okay. I wonder if there's a way I can just... Hmm, you know what? I have a better idea. Let's actually go back. That was there. So now it's on the ground. I'm just going to make a... So... See how there's just a ton being made now? So I just press Control V like a hundred times. Let's just bring these kind of all over the place. Just kind of putting them everywhere. Try not to make them look so uh, in line because when they're in something like this, they don't look, they're kind of all jumbled up, right? So let's just kind of keep spreading these out in random ways. So it looks like a pile of gold. That's kind of what I'm looking for here is a pile of gold look. Make some more of them. I think that'll be enough. Get them all over the place. I could have done bigger coins and then uh, do less of this, but I think this will look a little bit better. So but they're kind of all, <laughs> if you look, they're kind of in an order because <laughs> they're snapping to the grid. <laughs> That's okay. That's fine. All right, let's go ahead and I'm not going to group them per se. Right? Actually, I'll group it. Sure. Group it. Now I can, by control G, group. I knew that would be a little slow grouping that, but that's okay. So raise that up, and I can just bring this whole thing over. And I can raise it up. Look at that. We got some gold in it. So if I change this to black, they got some gold. Oop, the legs. <laughs> the legs weren't grouped with it. Let's group and change. 
black. Yep. Cool. All right, guys. That's all I'm going to do for today. Hope everyone has a fantastic day. I'll see you guys on Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. See ya. Good morning. Today I'm making blueberry muffins, which I've made before. But my daughter loves them, so she's always asking me to make them. So I thought I would make them again. Um, I thought of making blueberry bread, which you can also do. But I only had these mini loaves, so I wasn't sure how many I would need. So I'm just going to stick to the muffins. So I have the mix. I need two eggs. I don't think she wants an egg shell. Okay, I need um, a cup of water. Is it a cup of water? Three quarter cups of water, which is a little too much. Three quarter cups of water and a quarter cup of um, corn oil. Oven is on 375. Now I have my blueberries here and you need to be very careful with blueberries because you don't want to just put them in here and mash them because then they won't be blueberries anymore. They'll be blueberry juice. So mix up your batter. all mixed up and then put your blueberries in and you don't want to um, mash them in you just want to gently <clears throat> they call it folding but gently mix them in and you have to be very careful with blueberries as well because if you get them on your clothes they can stain so I'm just gently going to mix them in So they look like that. And now I'm going to put them in one of these bags. Try not, you don't want to fill them up because they're going to get bigger when you cook them, remember? So if you fill them up all the way, then they'll be bulging. Sometimes I do that by accident, but. Just try to be mindful of it. Pretty much even them out. So this is what they look like. They look so professional. <laughs> so I'm going to put them in the oven for 25 minutes at 375 and I will show you what they look like when they come out. Again I sprayed the pan so you can just pop them out when they're done but I'll show you what they look like at the end. All right, so the muffins are out of the oven. They took about 25 minutes. I'm gonna put this in the middle. It comes out clear. And you wanna let them cool before you pop them out of the um, pan. 
You want to be like really um, gentle with that. See how it pops right out? Okay. I let these cool a little bit, which is why they popped right out. So otherwise you're good to go. If you pop them out too soon and they're going to crumble and fall apart, they'll still taste fine, but they'll just make a mess. All right. So yeah, good to go. So once again, blueberry muffins. And again, you can do blueberry bread if you don't have a muffin tin. Um, or any type of like loaf type bread. Okay, see you guys next time. Hey Gators, welcome back to Language and Play. All right, we're gonna do our vocal warm up. We're gonna to do Topeka Bodega. Ready? Topeka, 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 Bodega, Bodega, Bodega. Topeka, 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 Bodega, Bodega, Bodega. Topeka Bodega, Topeka Bodega, Topeka Bodega, Topeka Bodega, Topeka Bodega. Ready? Let's try it again. Even I got a little tangled in that one. Topeka, 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 Bodega, Bodega, Bodega. Topeka, 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 Bodega, Bodega, Bodega. Topeka bodega, Topeka bodega, Topeka bodega, Topeka bodega, Topeka bodega. All right, try that a couple more times. All right, on your own. So, yesterday, you guys were able to hopefully create your The Bug monologue character. All right, that character you had full creative license on. All right, but you need to breathe some life into this character now using the monologue. So what you're going to do today is you're going to hop on Flipgrid and you are going to record yourself saying that monologue as the character you created. All right. Think about the genre. The genre was dramatic. All right. You are being dramatic. Um, you can even be over dramatic if you'd like. That's OK. But it's not a comedy. It's not funny. It's dramatic. All right. So what we'd like to do is go on to Flipgrid. And I want you to use your character to record the bug. Can't wait to see him, Gators. Great job. Keep up the good work and enjoy your weekend. Hi, guys. Okay, so today we're going to continue working on drawing the human figure. But this time we're going to be making a figure who's riding a bicycle. So far, we've drawn a person standing from the front view and then running and then a seated figure. And then we did a side profile of a figure standing. So now we're going to be looking at what a figure or human figure looks like riding a bicycle. And then we're going to draw that. So you want to just kind of keep in mind what parts of the body you're going to see. So you're going to see this whole leg, but then you're only going to see the bottom half of the other leg probably and you'll see some overlapping as well so one leg is overlapping and covering part of the other leg um, this arm is overlapping and covering part of that other arm okay so you want to think about that we drew a person standing in profile so this time you're also going to be making them look like they're in profile turned to the side so you can see his face is in profile he's not facing straight ahead and here the guy's going the other way, but he still has that profile. He's looking one way. You see some overlapping with his legs and arms. All right, guys. And here's kind of like some sort of cartoony style people on a bicycle. And there's a little family riding a tandem bicycle. But look at the shape of the figure. So we're going to be doing some overlapping with the arms and legs and drawing the face in profile. Okay. All right. So I'm going to leave this one. And I think what we should do first is draw the bicycle. And then we'll add the person. Hold on. There we go. All right. So you want to make your bicycle down low on the page so that you have enough room for your figure. We don't want to make a giant bicycle and then find out we don't have enough room for the person because we're focusing more on that figure. Let's see if I can get this into the view so we can see it. There we go. So it helps to have 
a photo of what you're trying to draw. Okay, so I'm going to start off just by making, and you can draw sort of lightly and just make like a sketch at first. So I'm just going to draw sort of lightly just the tires of the bicycle. And I'm making a space in between the tires. I'm not putting them close together, touching or anything like that. So you want to leave a little bit of a space for the frame of the bicycle. Okay, guys? So each of the tires has just like a little center part. This is going to be part of the frame like that. This has a little bit of a center part and the part of the frame is going up. So this part's going to go all the way up to where the handlebars are. And you just want to kind of do something like this just for now. Okay. And then this bicycle has the frame is coming from this part of the front part of the bike. And that's coming down sort of here. Okay. Kind of where the pedals come out from. This part. So we'll just draw the bicycle today and then tomorrow we'll draw our figure who's riding the bicycle. Alright, so we want to get all the parts of the bicycle before we draw the figure. And let's see, this part goes up. Kind of comes from here a little bit. And I keep looking back and forth. I'm looking at my image here and then I'm looking at my paper and trying to make sure that I'm drawing what I see. And not all bike frames look like this, but I'm just drawing this one for now. And you can make it a little different. You can make it look like your bike if you want, if you have a bike. But for now, I'm just going to do this bike. And maybe some kind of a seat. And some parts of this bicycle are going to disappear once we add the figure to the bicycle. So we'll be erasing and overlapping and things like that. Um, let's see. Do a little bit of a fender. There. And there. And your bike doesn't have to be perfect. Again, we're focusing on that figure. You can draw some little spokes in there. They don't have to be perfect. There's some little lines that indicate that there are some spokes. And that bike tire. So we have our bicycle ready to go. Tomorrow we're going to add our figure of riding a bike. And then we can add other details to the background and create an environment or a setting for our figure who's riding his or her bike. All right, guys. So I hope you were able to draw some kind of a sketch of a bicycle for now. Tomorrow we'll add our figure. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Virtual P. I'm Miss Reedy. All right, it's Friday. And on Fridays, we have our breakout rooms. Me and Miss Shameen come together and we have something fun installed for you. So we hope you come and join us in our breakout room, get a little exercise, have a little fun, get a little laughs, and get a good grade. All right, guys, hope to see you in our breakout room. Otherwise, have a great weekend. Thanks for watching Enrichment TV, Gators. Remember, work hard, be nice, and we'll see you tomorrow.